Hello everyone. I'm Olivier Norvez, the animation coordinator of the French Biodiversity Data Hub, aka Pôle National de Données de Biodiversité, which is a national infrastructure for research and proposing fair tools and services around biodiversity data and metadata. This infrastructure is led by the French National Museum of Natural History. As you can hear with my accent, I'm French, so sorry guys. And I just hope you will understand everything that I will show you for the next hour. Now I'm going to share with you my screen and please a few seconds. Up. That's it. So here we go. We took a computer and analysis biodiversity metrics with the biodiversity data exploration tools training. Indeed, in this tutorial, we will extract and explore a data set from the famous Reef Life Survey project. So we'll be using data extracted from the Australian Ocean Data Network portal. We have decided to use some data only on the Mollusca film from the east coast of Australia between 2008 and 2021. We will explore this data set in this view of making statistical analysis. So we will check the Homo the CTC and normality of the variables. See if some variables are correlated or not, how the data are distributed, so space and time, etc. And finally, we will explore beta diversity through the computation of the special contribution to beta diversity and the local contribution to beta diversity. So before to start the training, I will present you the Galaxy Ecology Interface. So the first to, the first thing to do is to simply to go to Galaxy Ecology through the URL galaxy uh, URL ecology.galaxy.u. Up like this. Okay. Here we go. So ecology.usegalaxy.u. Up. The interface is composed by four main parts. The head banner, where you can log in and find data and workflow. The tools here on the left. Your, your history on your right. And the main part, where you can check your result and visualize your data. You have to log in for the Galaxy because it's better and you can, uh, if you are logging, you can save your history and something like that. So it's better to create an encode. It's simple, free, and better for you in the future. Okay. So now we will check the Galaxy training of biodiversity exploration. When the way to go there is to go to the help, support, tutorials, and Galaxy Training Network. So there, you can see that there, is, there are a lot of uh, trainings uh, about many topics like uh, ensemble climate, epigenetics, genomics, metabolomics, proteomics, etc. And for us, ecology. In total, you have eight tutorials. And for us, especially the biodiversity data exploration. So we will follow this tutorial. Okay, the, this page is like this. So the title, Biodiversity Data Exploration, the authors, and you can uh, make contribution if you want. So it's because Galaxy, uh, the Galaxy project, it's a common and uh, collaborative project. You can make contribution and it's better to understand that you will do and it's better for the community in general. 
So this training is composed of four parts. The introduction, of course. Uh, the main, the first part is the data preparation. Get data, upload data, customize your data set, just to prepare your data set to make real analysis after that. The second part is the data checking. And here we will check and test the normality, the structure of your data, the autocorrelation, the collinearity, etc. The data exploration for the third part. And we will visualize abundance, repartition, and dispersion. And the final part is the beta diversity. And as I said, we will test the local contribution to beta diversity, LCBD and the species contribution to beta diversity, SCBD. Okay. So for the data preparation, in this part, I will show you, you can get your data and customize your data set. And we'll use a classical biodiversity data set containing taxonomic, spatial, and temporal information for illustrating our training. The first step is to get data. And just before that, we'll come back to the Galaxy page. So we have to create an history. So here, you click on the plus button and then history. So we'll name it. Uh, because uh, we will use a data set from Reflash survey, maybe we can use the acronym RLS for real life survey and biodiversity data exploration to real like this. Okay, we have the na this name RLS biodiversity data exploration tutorial. And now we'll upload our data. You can upload your data from your local computer or from an external source. So get data. On your left, you have to put on the upload data button here. A new window appears. And you will upload the data from Zenodo that you can find in the training and past and flash data. Uh, copy past and start. Okay, it works. We can close this window. As you can see, it's gray and it's not green, the, this case. Uh, it means uh, it doesn't ready to, to start uh, some analysis or some uh, customizing data set, etc. So you have to wait. You can drink a coffee like this. Or just wait a few seconds. Because maybe it will be long just because uh, yesterday there was a big maintenance on the Galaxy Ecology uh, platform for Europe. And maybe if it's too long, we will use uh, the a national instance uh, here we are in Ecology Galaxy Europe, and maybe we can use the French instance, so .fr. Okay, we will use it. Okay, just change and type fr for France. Okay. Exactly the same uh, interface with the uh, banner, head banner, the tools on your left, uh, the history on your right, on your yes, and uh, the main uh, part uh, to visualize your data and result after you did uh, some analysis. So, uh, in a mystery, we uh, have to do exactly the same step. RLS for Reef Life Survey, Biodiversity Data Exploration, Tutorial, 
get data from an external source, upload data. Start. Okay, it works. Yeah. Okay. Now you can see it's raining. The color uh, are changed. The color has changed. Sorry for my English. Okay, now it's green. Perfect. Uh, with the I button or icon, you can click on it and check your data set. Okay. Uh, it's not possible to see something with that. Uh, and as you can see on the first lines, it's not data, it's just metadata. So we will use a tool, uh, which name is uh, remove beginning. This. Uh, we have to remove the 72 first lines from this data set. Just verify it's the same data set, but because we have only one data set in our history, uh, there is no reason there, uh, this is, there is a mistake. So, okay, execute. gray oh the color is changing and you can see it's raining it's down it turns yes it's green okay view your data okay the first 72 lines are disappear so that's perfect now because it's not a, a good format to, to, to do some analysis, we have to change the format. Just before we can uh, change the name of this data set because the name is a little bit long. So maybe if life survey, Risk, something like that. It's good. Save it. Okay. The name has changed. And now we have to specify the format. So we'll change it to CSV. Up, save it.
screen now, so maybe we can check. Uh, up. Okay, it's CSV, but we want this convert to tabular. So, verify convert CSV to tabular. Okay, create data set. A new step appears in your history. Convert CSV to tabular. So here, as the name is history, you, you have the first type, reflex of the mollusk, just it's, a, it's your upload. After that, we have uh, removed uh, the 72 lines, first lines. And now we convert this data set to CSV and to CSV to tabular. Now maybe you can check it. Okay, it looks like good. Uh, because we won't use all the column here, because uh, too much information just for the tuto. Uh, we will use another tool, which is advances, advanced cut columns from a table. So same thing. And that before, uh, we just uh, advance this cut, uh, sorry. Oh, columns. From the table, yeah. Okay, it appears here. This is the first suggestion, that's perfect. Okay, and now you have to verify. Uh, up. This is your data set. Keep operation, keep column. Deleted part tab because we are in tabular cut by fields and we have to select the colon eight ten eleven twelve twenty five and twenty eight okay and execute Yes. Six colors selected are here. Size code, latitude, latitude, the survey date, species name, and total it means a dance. So uh, we have all the information of who, where, when, how. Not the how exactly, but uh, the main information to, to do. Uh, biodiversity data exploration. Okay, that's it. It's cool. It works. The second step uh, to customize your data set 
is uh, we will use the tool column regex find and replace with the following parameters uh, select from we will use this data set and we will select the column four one two three four survey date just to to keep uh, the year and uh, yeah uh remove the all, the all of this information like months and days so i will search the tool column gex okay this is this is one Yeah. The last. Uh, this is the good uh, data set, for the, the good uh, step of the story. Using colon four, as I said, because it's for the date. Click on insert check and using the regex. So you can just copy paste your data set, uh, your, your formula from the tuto up. I hope you understand. But uh, no worries. Uh, if you have some suggestion about this tutorial, you can uh, uh, send uh, to me an email uh, to olivier.norvez.mnhn.fr. And you will, uh, you, can, uh, you can do anything to. to to have better tutorials, like contribution or just simple suggestions. Okay, it's green, it works. Just check the data and it's perfect. You remove all the information about the months and the days and just keep the year. So we have six colon, the size code, the latitude, the longitude, survey date, with only the year, the species name of the mollusk phylum, and the total of the species, its abundance. Okay, that's cool. So we'll go to for the second uh, main part, the data checking. Here in the next part, we will check our data set. I mean, how are structured this data? And especially we'll examine, exam, examine sorry, the homocysticity, it's a difficult word to say, and normality, and the autocorrelation and collinearity. Here we will check homogeneity of the variance with the Levin test for every species and uh, represent it through multiple box plot and the normal distribution thanks to the Kol kolmogorov smirnov test, represent, which will be represented by a distribution histogram and the QQ plot. So use the tool homocedasticity and normality. Okay, you can just 
because the word is difficult to say and to type, maybe you can just copy and paste uh, from the tutorials this function, these tools, and that's perfect. You, uh, you get it, so click on it. Okay, the same interface at each time. Uh, I mean, okay, from where? Uh, and you will categorize your your action. So like select column containing, select column containing spaces, etc., etc. And after that, you can execute. So the interface could be complicated, but it's so simple because it's all the time the same things. So uh, we have to check the following parameters. So input table, use the colon redex fine. Okay, this is the last one we use it. And that's it. Select colon containing temporal date. This is the C4 for colon four. Select colon containing spaces. Uh, species, species, uh, species name, and numerical values, total, total for impotence. So execute. You can execute and wait a few seconds, take a coffee, as I said, verify your email, your social networks, or whatever. And you will have two free outputs. These free outputs are running, as you can see, on your right part, the history. These three outputs, uh, uh, which are the Levin test for almost SDTI dataset, the Kolmogorov Smirnov test for normality, and nine PNG files in a data collection. Okay, cool. Kolmogorov Smirnov, you can check it. Okay. If the level test is significant, p value in column p are inferior to zero dot five, and at least one at the end of the first line, variants aren't homogeneous. The hypothesis of homeostasticity is rejected. If the Kolmogorov Smirnov test is significant, p value inferior to uh, 0 0.5, your numerical variable is not normally distributed. The hypothesis is normality, your, your, sorry, the hypothesis of normality is rejected. The two tests have to be significant, so variance aren't homogeneous and data it's not normality, normally distributed. And the nine PNG files appears here, appear here. And you will check with the I icon for each species you have in your data set like this. So as you can see, Galaxy Ecology, it's perfect just to, to have a teasing of your data, to, to prepare your data, to customize your data. And it's, uh, it's very practical to, to discover your data and explore, exploring your data. So come back for the RLS Biodiversity Data Exploration Tutorial. OK. Now we'll uh, use the tools uh, variables exploration with the following parameters. I will say to you, I will say to you, 
So click on the tools part, variables, operation. The good orthograph is better. Okay, here it appears in the first suggestions. And we have to check some parameters. So, as the tutorial uh, said, says, uh, input table, uh, the last one, this is it, okay. Verify it. Uh, the first line is a header line. Yes, you have to click on yes. Variable links between expression. And here, select autocorrelation of when selected numerical variables. Numerical value, if you remember well, it's a six, the column six total for abundance. And now you can execute. You will have two outputs here. You can see it's running, and after that, it will become green. And uh, these two outputs is one text file containing the autocorrelation function value, and one PNG file in the data collection, showing the autocorrelation for a variable. If the bars of the histogram are strictly confined between the dash, dashed lines representing the interval of confidence, there is autocorrelation. So we have to wait and we will check the autocorrelation. Yes, it's green. Can check it, okay. A table with autocorrelation for each species. Oh no, not for each species, anyway. And the variable exploration, autocorrelation, PNG. That's cool. Here we can see there is no autocorrelation. Okay, so. And for the last part of this uh, check data part, we will test the collinearity, collinearity, sorry, between numerical variables. So use the tool, the same tools before variables exploration. Okay. Well, that sometimes doesn't work. Well, no. Okay. Uh, I need a coffee, I think. Another coffee. Okay, we, uh, we have to check some parameters. Input tables, this is the good one. Column regex, find and replace in data form. Verify, it's yes. Okay, no, yes, yes. Uh, and now you have to select. Uh, tuck, tuck, Collinearity between selected selected numerical variables for each species. So that's perfect. This is the first one. So it appears directly in the this parameter. Uh, select column containing species. Species name, the column five. And now you have to select column containing numerical value. So, uh, click on the button. Value. value. C four C six. Yeah. 
your research, you can sing, you can dance, close your eyes. It's a little bit long. Just we stop one minute. See you later. Okay, I'm back here. Uh, so it works. We have uh, two outputs. One describing spaces we couldn't evaluate, and uh, one PNG file with one plot containing multiple correlation plots and the correlation value between each variables. So we can check it up. This is not enough data, as I said, so we could not evaluate it. And the nine outputs in the data collection. So we can see the autocorrelation for each species. No, no, the collinearity of each species. So there is a total survey date. Up. You can download uh, all of these images. I didn't say that, but it's really practical uh, to illustrate uh, your articles or your data paper or technical papers or scientific paper, anyway, or just a tuto. And you can see in the trainings of the biodiversity data exploration uh, some of these images. So, okay, back to our main history part and now we will enter in the hard part uh, not uh, when i say hard it's, i mean it's not uh, difficult but uh, just uh, the important part to explore biodiversity in your data set so in this part i will show you how you can explore the biodiversity of your data set so the through the abundance uh, with the space and time of the molluscan species of your data set. Here we will visualize the, the abundance repartition through space. So I can present to you a very cool tool, the presence, presence absence, and abundance. OK. Take. I go to the tool part and copy paste the function the tools you can find in your training. I'll just type the name, presence, absence, and a buttons. And okay, this is the second one of the proposition. We are the same thing. You have to put the good. Uh, it's the step. So colon regex find and repass on the data for. Yes, that's it. And now check uh, what want, what do you want to do? So for us, we have to use variables presence. Uh, no, no, sorry. Abundance map. Yes, that's it. That's it. Okay. Select column containing latitude. Okay. Perfect. This is the same name. Longitude. The column three. Uh, what do you study in this analysis? Uh, for example, uh, mollusk of the Australian East Coast from two. 
2008 to 2021, I remember, one year. Oh, oh, let's go to the Australian East Coast. Select uh, columns containing Texan, species name, and abundance. The column six for total. Now you can execute. And uh, you will have two outputs, one with the map of the abundance through space with the coordinate and one text file to inform you about the geographical extent of your map. Uh, when you Okay, it works. Just appearance. So that's perfect. That I use up longitude from and latitude from. Now you can click on the present sector absence and map this one. Oh, that's cool. It's a really cool uh, tool because uh, with it, you can see the repartition of your spaces uh, from the latitude and longitude. And with the abundance, as you can see at the right of this uh, graph, uh, more the circle is big, more there are uh, an important abundance. And this is interesting because you can see exactly the same thing with the map with background, but uh, here you can detect a pattern or uh, maybe uh, an interesting repartition without uh, uh, without a perturbation of the background of the map behind this information. So yeah, I think it's a really nice uh, tool. Okay. So now we will visualize the number of locations where each taxons are present. Same thing, we will use the present substance and abundance tool. Okay, with the following parameters uh, formatted by the data file. Well, but this is one. Okay. Uh, click on yes, yes, and now variables present, we will uh, use presence count of bar, this one for the bar, bar plot, okay, select column continue, save for, select column containing your separation variables. This is the side code. Containing taxon, species name, containing evidence, C6 for colon six, and now you can execute. Okay, now uh, we have two outputs, one with uh, 120 PNG files, one for each site, 
representing the number of locations where each taxons are present and one text file to inform you about the use location. So the use location, um, this one, yeah. Okay, we can check it. This is the location. And the 120 representation. So for example, for this one, okay. can see there is no so many informations on these uh, images but because uh, as i said at the beginning of the tutorials it's a subset so just for this floating error tutorials we don't select a big data set but for normal data set you will have more information of this kind of representation Okay, back to RLS biodiversity data exploration tutorial, the main story part. And now we'll do and visualize the raw reflection curves of your species. So we will use the tool presence absence and enabled once again uh, with other parameters. Okay, this one. This is the good uh, input table. Yes, raw refraction curves of species. Size of subsamples, uh, we can select and type 200. Select column containing species, species name, the column five, abundance, column six, Total, and now we can execute. with the captation of subtitles it will be, be better for you to understand my english okay uh it works everything is green so you have two outputs one data collection uh this one and uh, one graph and one tabular file okay can check it. Oh, it's beautiful. Okay, for each species. So let's go. Now we will uh, enter in the last part of this uh, tutorial the beta diversity. So here we will explore the beta diversity, which is the ratio between regional and local species diversity. 
And for test this beta diversity, we will use the LCBD for local contribution to beta diversity, uh, which are cooperative indicators for the ecological inequities of the sites. And, the, we'll, and we will use the SCBD for species contribution to beta diversity, which is the degree of variation for individual species across the study area. So, we have to select the tool local contribution to beta diversity in the same tool part here. Up. This is one. And you will see this is the same tool for the SCBD. So select it. Okay, uh, we have to check some parameters. Uh, input formatted biodiversity data files. So it's not rounded, it's, it's the, this one. Select a colon with abundances total with location, uh, site code, detection. Species name, date, survey date. Click on yes. And select longitude and decimal degrees. Take attack. few seconds, I will stop the recording a few seconds, sorry. Okay, sorry. Uh, I had to check uh, something. Uh, no, so uh, select colon. Okay, we, we, we were for the local contribution to the diversity. Okay, select the good one, the good table. Click on yes, select colon with abundance. So this is colon six with location, site code, colon containing taxon, species name, containing date, survey date. And here, other LCBD specializes representation or XY plot. So you have to select specialized representation and select colon containing latitude in decimal degrees latitude okay containing longitude longitude okay and now you can execute it and i just remember we uh, forgot uh, the box plot so we will the box plot in the in the check data part. So we'll do just after this beta diversity. Sorry for that. It's perfect. Okay, you have uh, uh, four outputs here, here, here. Here, uh, this is the for the air object uh, for your air analysis. But uh, so you have only three outputs. 
two text files containing a table with information on the beta diversity and one text file with the list of species that has a SCBD larger than the mean SCBD. And one data collection with PNG file, files showing multiple plots according to one type of variables in order to visualize the beta diversity. Okay, okay. We can view, okay, that's it. Species, which species has, have a CD larger than mean SCD? You can see it. The LCD. And, uh, beta diversity for space, site time, mean SCD, and you can check it with a beautiful graph. Or uh, if you want, you can uh, um, change the, uh, the interface, the uh, resolution of your screen to have a better information of this graph. The minute CBD. And what a plot. Explore your better diversity with SCBD. That's cool. No? Uh, me, I think this is the best tool ever. So, uh, as I said just before, we forgot, we have forgotten one tool. So we'll come back for the check data part. And I will present you the Uh, present absence with box plot for visualizing the number of locations where each taxons are present. Okay, so came back to the tools part and type presence, absence, and evidence up. Okay, took this one. And we have to check the same parameters all the time. Colon regex find and replace on data for. Click on yes, it's yes, okay. Separation variable side code. Containing taxon, species name, abundance, abundance. Okay, that's it. And you will have two outputs. We have already a fait, en fait. Okay, sorry guys. Uh, we did it. Okay, we did it. Uh, but we can do it again, just for the fun. Definitely, I need a big coffee for this afternoon. Sorry, but uh, thanks to me, you can see exactly the same uh, situation twice, like in the Inception movie or Matrix movie. Uh, as you can see, uh, there are a lot of tools for biological analysis, for biodiversity, climate, uh, etc. Uh, this is really interesting tools. And as you can see, I'm not a coder. Uh, I, I used our uh, 
five or six years ago, and now I don't use it uh, because uh, my function uh, doesn't need it. But uh, now, if I want to do some analysis, ecological analysis, I can use Galaxy Ecology without knowing, uh, without a big knowledge of programmation. And this is uh, the main uh, advantage of Galaxy Ecology. It works with a strong background of statistical analysis. Everything is checked, everything is reviewing by pair. Uh, so no worries. This is a strong uh, instance and strong uh, tool to, to do an ecological analysis. And as I said, it's the best, it's the best tool for people without big knowledge in programmation. Okay. And we have exactly the same thing that before. Yes. Uh, so we did it again. So sorry. Anyway, now this is the end of the of this tutorial. So thank you for watching me. And you just did an ecological analysis on biodiversity in exploring your biodiversity dataset. So now you know how to prepare your biodiversity dataset with uh, Galaxy. Uh, check the data inside and explore them, especially the beta diversity. I hope I didn't bore you too much with technicalities uh, and that you enjoy this training with me. And don't hesitate to ask questions at this event chat or by email at this address, olivier.norvez at mnhn.fr. If you have any suggestion on how to make this training better, do not hesitate to contact me as well. And thank you very much for watching. Ciao, bye.